Greetings in the name of our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Timothy Smithwick, all the way from New Jersey, Ford and Faith Assembly, United States of America. I'd like to take this time to thank our father and our mother, Archbishop Professor E.H. Goody and Dr. Una Goody, for allowing me, me this time to share the word of God in their place. Again, I want to thank them so much. You know, when I met um, our father, Archbishop Professor E.H. Goody, I didn't know just how wonderful he was. He was such a loving man, and he still loves people. That's one thing I know about our father, Archbishop Professor E.H. Goody. He loves people. If you meet a man, this is a man that you will meet. He's a godly man. He, he, he brings the God of Ezekiel into, into our lives. And he's going to bring the God of Ezekiel into your life this morning. So I just want to thank God for our father and our mother, Archbishop Professor E.H. Goody and my Goody. Thank you, father, uh, spiritual father and mother. I love you and God bless you and thank you for this opportunity. Before we get into the sermon, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you that lives are going to be touched today. Souls are going to be saved today. People are going to be set free from every addiction, every bondage that they have gone through in their life. They're going to be set free today. Lord, I thank you. Holy Spirit, I pray you have your way today, Holy Spirit. Touch the hearts and lives on, on, this, on, this, uh, on this program, um, Holy Spirit. You have your way. We give the praise, we give the honor, and we give you the glory. For we pray this in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, God bless everybody this morning. We thank you for coming out and, and to this service. I'm going If I had a title, I would entitle my message called The Midnight Hour. You know, the midnight hour is the darkest night of all. It is a, it's a place of hopelessness. What about you? Do you feel hopeless this morning? Do you feel like your world's crashing all around you? Do you feel like that there's no hope for you at all? Is, have you met your lowest point in life that you tried everything that you possibly could and nothing is working out? That is your midnight hour. Are your children have, uh, have fallen away from the family? Have you, lost, ha have you lost your job? Has your car been repossessed? What is it that's attacking your life? Guess what? That, my friend, is your midnight hour. We're going to look at a person in Mark chapter 5, verse 25. This woman, well, this was her mi midnight hour. Let's turn to uh, Mark chapter 5, starting at verse 25. And this what it reads. Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. And had suffered many things from many positions. She had spent all that she had, was no longer better, but grew worse. That was her midnight hour, people. That was her midnight hour. She suffered with the flow of blood for 12 years. Think about a, a, a person uh, lo losing blood like that. They, 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 they lose their weight. They can't eat because why? It's attacking their physical body. So just like this woman issued blood for 12 years, she suffered. And she thought, maybe if I can go see a doctor. Maybe this doctor can help me out. So she goes, the Bible says she goes and sees doctors. But guess what? They give a report and says, oh, no, we can't do nothing for you. This morning, some of you received a bad report from your doctor. And they said that I, we can do no more for you. But I got great news for you this morning. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, wants to touch your body. He wants to heal you this morning. All you got to do is simply believe what God says in his word. And I'm going to show you some good news in a minute. Even this woman in Mark chapter 5, verse 25, the one that issued blood for 12 years, Oh, she suffered greatly. Ah, 12 years. Think about it. How long have you been suffering with your disease? How long have you been suffering from financial uh, difficulty? How long have you been uh, just trying to survive in your life? Like this one with the flow of blood for 12 years. I, and, and, and she was looking for a cure. Are you looking for a cure this morning? I got great news for you. You're about to get it. In Mark chapter 5, verse 25, we, we, uh, we go down to verse um, 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 27. And it reads, when she heard about Jesus, this morning, you're going to hear about Jesus. And a lot of you, when you hear about Jesus, you're going to surrender your life to him. You're going to be changed this morning. Here we go back to verse 27. When she heard, I want you to hear this morning. I want you to hear Jesus, not me. I want you to hear Jesus Christ, the son of God, talking to you this morning. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in, in the crowd and touched his garment. 
For she said, if I only may touch his clothes, I will be made well. Our people of God, stretch your faith this morning. Like the woman issued blood for 12 years, she stretched her faith. She says she heard the report. What report are you hearing? Are you hearing a doctor's report? Are you hearing a family member's report? Or are you hearing the devil's report? I got good news for you. Don't you dare listen to him. He's a liar. Jesus Christ said that the enemy comes for one purpose. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But guess what? Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, came to give you abundant life. This morning, you're going to have an abundant life. You're not going to be tortured by the devil any longer. That sickness, that disease in your body, it's going to go this morning in the mighty name of Jesus so this woman she began to build her faith up she heard reports about Jesus and people about being healed she probably heard about her her friends next door oh this man Jesus he touched my body and I'm no longer I'm I no longer have this disease and guess what as she 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 began to grow her faith she goes if I can but touch the hem of his garment and when you think about somebody's garment it's very tiny it's not great faith it's not great how to touch a whole garment she says if I can but touch the of his garment I will be made whole and if you read on the word of God says in Mark chapter 5 going down to verse 29 immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she that she was healed of the affliction let me tell you when God heals your body it is immediately it is suddenly just like on the day of Pentecost that day they were all together in one accord they were assembled together they were waiting for the promise of the father and then guess what the Bible says in, in, in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 it says and suddenly a lot of you this morning you're going to get your suddenly today if you'll just only believe what the word of God says don't take my word for it you believe what the word of God says and as you believe you receive your healing you receive your financial breakthrough what is it what is your midnight hour ah just like the woman issued blood for 12 years guess what even though she suffered she heard the report about Jesus after she heard she built her faith up I want you to build your faith up this morning i want you to say to yourself i know that jesus christ can heal my body i know that jesus christ wants me healed for the bible says that is by his stripes you are healed so the word of god already declares over your life so i want to encourage you this morning reach out your faith just like that woman issued blood for 12 years she reached out and she touched the hem of his garment i want you to do the same thing this morning people of god As we continue on the midnight hour, remember what I said earlier, the midnight hour, it is the darkest. It is the most gloomiest part of the night. It is that night where all hope seems to be lost, that there seems to be no 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 cure for whatever that you and I are going through. I'm going to show you another two individuals, our great powerful men of God. They love God with all their heart. There's some of you right now, you love Jesus Christ with all your heart. You pay your tithes, you sing, you worship, you don't complain, you don't grumble, you give God thanks and everything, but things are not going right in your life. I'll tell you why. The reason why things are not going right in your life, because when you begin to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy hears that, and he doesn't want the name of Jesus to be lifted up. So I want to encourage you. We're about to see two people this morning. We're going to see two people in the book of Acts. There was in their midnight hour, but oh, their midnight hour, even though it was long and gloomy and dark, oh, but what God used them to do, I, and let me get to that reading. We read them in Acts chapter 16, starting at verse 16. It says, Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, and they, and th- and they, and they proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. Now, here you would think this individual was a born-again Christian, wouldn't you? But the Bible says that she had a spirit of divination. She was a fortune teller. She could tell you. There's some of you this morning, you've been going to witch doctors, fortune tellers, and you've been letting them speak to your future Uh uh-uh don't go to them they don't know your future only Jesus Christ knows your future he has a plan a purpose for you if you only receive by faith today if you just believe what the word of God says then your life will never be the same your life will be changed from one degree of glory to the next 
So she begins to proclaim, these men are the servants of the Most High God. These men are the servants of the Most High God. And she did this for many days. And the Bible says right here in, in, uh, in, in, in verse 18, but Paul greatly annoyed. The devil is annoying a lot of you this morning. How long are you going to let the enemy annoy you? Look what happened when Paul the apostle incised what they did. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her this morning. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but whatever you're going through, I command that infirmity. I command that sickness. I command financial breakthrough. I command that spirit of poverty. I command it to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Be loosed. Be set free today in the mighty name of Jesus. And just like Paul, they set that woman free. As they continued on the journey, the man who saw his prophet... He lost all his wages. He realized now the girl that I had, she was my, she was my money maker. She made me the fortune. But now because of these men, they've troubled my city. They've troubled where I live. Let's go down to Acts um, chapter 16, verse 20. And it says, and they brought them to the magistrates and said, these men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. <laughs> what about you and I as believers? Are we troubling our city? What about the devil? Does he know your name? Does he know my name? It, what, what is it that, that, that the enemy knows about you and I? That, 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 um, here we see that they brought, the, they brought them to the magistrates and they said that these men, they have troubled our city. They're preaching customs. They're, they're blaspheming God. They're doing all these things. And they have caused a problem in our city. And it says, then the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. Verse 23. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. So let me tell you, even though you're worshiping the Lord Jesus, even though you give your pay your tithes, you sing in the choir, you do all these wonderful things in the kingdom of God. Don't think that the enemy is not going to mess with you. Matter of fact, he's, he's the, you're the very person that he's going to mess around with. Why? Because you were operating in the kingdom of God. The enemy doesn't want you to prosper. The enemy doesn't want you to have a healing in your body. The enemy's out to destroy you. Think about somebody that hates you and I so bad. He hates you and I that when we go out and we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ that we're being told by security police officers oh you can't do this anymore things have changed you can't even mention the name of Jesus but we see these uh, 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 two great men of God Paul and Silas they were beaten with rods put yourself in their shoes this morning they were beaten with rods how about you and I what would we do if they took us to jail and they beat us and threw us in the jail how will how will we react to that I'm about to show you what Paul and Silas did they were turned over to the jailer they were kept in prison and not only that but they were fastened they, they had stocks they were in their midnight hour it was dark it was gloomy they didn't have light they had nothing that 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 would show that that people all around they were dark so guess what? I like this part in, in uh, Acts chapter 16, verse 25. And it reads, but at midnight, let me say that again. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. What about you and I? When we go through hard times and trials, are we praying and singing to God? Are we worshiping or are we complaining? Are you and I complaining, Lord, why me? Why am I going through this? Why has my children left me? Why am I in financial ruin? How come I lost my business? How come they repossessed my car? Lord, I, I just don't understand. How come all of a sudden this affliction has touched my body? God, I serve you. I worship you. I love you. So why am I going through all this? But Paul and Silas had a different take on life. It says at midnight, this was their hour. This was their time of midnight time. And the Bible says that, uh, they were praying and 
singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Not only when you're worshiping God and you're singing hymns to the Lord, guess what? People are hearing you. People in your home are hearing you. When you go out into the crowd, guess what? People are hearing you worship and praise God just like these prisoners were. Oh, but it gets better. It gets a whole lot better in verse 26. Suddenly, there's that word suddenly again. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Ah, we give glory to God for this this morning. Suddenly, this morning, a lot of you are going to get your suddenlies. You're going to get your financial suddenly. You're going to get your healing suddenly. You're going, your, 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 chan, your family's going to come back to you suddenly. The uh, uh, things that you've been wanting from God, doors have been closed. Guess what? The same thing here. The Bible says when an earthquake came, it didn't come to kill or destroy. Same thing with you this morning. You may have an earthquake going on in your life, and you may think, oh, my God, I'm going to die. But I have good news for you this morning, people of God. The Word of God says when, when the earthquake, it shook the foundation. Foundations. Not only did the foundations get shake, shaken, but it also says, and immediately the doors were open. There's a lot of you this morning. Doors have been close to you. You can never get where you need to go. You've been, you, you've been praying. You've been fasting. You've been getting your resume together. You've been all these things, and nothing seems to be happening. But I got good news for you. Watch what happens. When Paul and Silas, when they were praying and singing hymns to God, it says, an earthquake, the, the foundation began to shake. Is your foundation shaken this morning? What's going on with you is this your midnight hour ask yourself the things that I'm saying am I in my midnight hour and the Bible says and immediately the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose not only when you get your breakthrough it's not just for you it's for everybody around you just like when Paul and Silas and think about this when they were chained together the Bible says and they still worship the Lord they were still the, 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 the chains that bound them, they were still worshiping. Now think about this. Let's look at this right here. It says, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. This morning, a lot of you, your chains are going to be loosed. These doors that you've been trying to get through, they're going to be opened in the name of Jesus. Let's give God some glory this morning. In verse 27, and it says, and the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep. And seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. Verse 28. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm, for we are all here. For we are all here. Verse 29. Then he called for a light, ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Not only did Paul and Silas see God puts us in position sometimes that God wants to save somebody. And let me tell you, a lot of times when God puts us in hard situations, we begin to complain. Ah, let me tell you, people of God, that's not the time because God has a purpose and a plan for everything because we, we serve a good God. We serve a God that is merciful. God's merciful to you this morning. You are alive today. You can see, you can breathe, you can hear. You got clothes on your back. You got a home to live in. You got food on the table. You have money in your pocket. You have a family. You have life. God's giving you abundant life and thank Jesus for that. But when God puts us in different positions in life, situations, trials and tribulations, don't think it's strange. As we heard, it says when, when the chains were loosed and the doors were open, the guard was about to kill himself. There's a lot of you this morning, you've been thinking about committing suicide. I come against that spirit right now in the name of Jesus that it will not take your life. It's not your time. God has a purpose and a plan for you. So don't you dare believe that lie. He's a father of lies. Even Jesus said that he's a father of lies. He can't tell the truth. So when he tells you you're not going to make it in life, you're always going to be sinning. You're always going to be doing this. You're going to be like your mom, your dad, your grandpa, your uncle, your nephew. That's a lie. Remember, he cannot tell the truth. He's a father of lies. So a lot of you this morning, I come against that spirit of suicide. I come against that mind-binding spirit, and I command it to go. I command it to release its tentacles off your head, off your soul, off your mind, off your spirit in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare healing in your body, healing in your soul, the peace of God that flows to your body in the mighty name of Jesus. So as they continued, the Bible says the guard about to kill himself. But Paul says, don't do yourself no harm. We're all here. We ain't gone anywhere. 
And you know what? The guard saw this. Remember, when, when, when a guard was given strict orders that you're supposed to watch these prisoners, not one is to escape. Because if one escaped, you were to take yourself and kill yourself with the sword. Why? Because if you didn't, then the higher ups, the authorities would have done it for you. So that's why they, they, they programmed them, just like the world's being programmed today. We got to program our minds to think differently. We have to think the way God thinks, not the way, not way the world programs you and I. The world has had, a, you know, a programming from the world is enough. We need to read the word of God. We need to pray. We need to seek the face of God even more as we see the days approaching. But we go back, and it says, and he ran in with the light, and he came. He was trembling. Oh, he was in, he, he couldn't believe it. He, he's like, wow, you know, they're still here, so I don't have to kill myself. And the Bible says, he, and he came in trembling, and he says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Verse 31, so they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. I'm talking to somebody this morning. Matter of fact, I'm talking to families right now this morning. What must you do to be saved? You're asking that question. You've been thinking this question for a very long time. You've been asking yourself, what must I do to be saved? And here's the cure right here. Here in verse 31 and they said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved let me ask you a question have you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ D do you believe in Jesus Christ I'm going to lead you in a sinner's prayer later on in, in this broadcast but I want you to know that Jesus Christ loves you he loves you with an unconditional love he died for you he shed his blood for your sins think about it in the book of Genesis in the garden when Adam when he transgressed out of disobedience death came upon Upon all mankind but the word of God also declares because of one man's obedience righteousness will be given to everybody so this morning when you give your your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ God's going to take your unrighteousness and he's going to impute his righteousness into your life then once he does that now you have access into the very presence of God why you say because of the blood of Jesus Christ it covers you it is his covering over your life it is his covering to protect you from things in this world but not only that but now you are declared righteous that means you go before the father without any sense of guilt without any sense of inferiority you can go before the father and say father I thank you through the blood of your son Jesus Christ that he died for me oh I'm, I want you to pray this prayer people of God this morning as we get to that point but here we say it says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus now we're going to see another individual who faced his midnight hour and let me tell you midnight hours they're not fun because you feel like that what am I going to do my child has ran away. My financial situation is getting worse. This illness, this sickness in my body is getting worse. I'm popping pills. I'm going to see doctors. They're running all these tests on me, but yet nothing is changing. Why? Why is nothing changing? Oh, we're about to find out this morning. We go to uh, Joseph. Um, he faced his midnight hour. In Genesis chapter 37, we read about... Uh, um, how Joseph, he was favored. He was favored by his father. There's a lot of you this morning. God is favoring you. God is going to favor you. When you go to places, God is going to bless and favor you beyond your wildest dreams, beyond your wildest imagination. So just begin to receive from the Lord this morning. Receive that favor. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive the favor of God on my life. So here's Joseph. He has dreams. God is showing him dreams. Ah, let me tell you, God is showing a lot of you people dreams this morning. God is giving you inspiration. God is giving you business ideas. God has done all these things, and he's giving you a dream. But what God doesn't show you is going to get you to that point. And just like Joseph, Joseph was showed all these wonderful dreams, showed him how he's going to be a, a prime minister and all these things. But guess what? Joseph did not realize what he was about to go through so we read in Genesis chapter 37 <clears throat> and I just kind of laid the foundation here starting in verse 16 the father sends uh, Joseph to 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 the uh, to his brothers 
And it says, so he said, I'm seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding the flocks. And the man said, they have departed from here. Uh, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. Verse 18. When they saw him afar off, even before he came near, they conspired against him to kill him. The enemy has conspired against you this morning to kill you. And he has tried. He's tried through car accidents. He's tried through drugs. He's tried through alcohol. He's tried through um, severe beatings. I mean, I mean, whatever it is, the enemy has tried to take you out. Why? Because you are a threat to the, uh, uh, to the kingdom of darkness. And, and here we see that they conspired against Joseph to kill him. Ah, and it says in verse 20, come, therefore, let us now kill him and cast him in some pit. They were trying to get rid of Joseph. They were trying to get rid of him. It's like, you know what? This dreamer, he done said all these things. There's no way I'm bowing down to our own little brother. Verse 21. But Reuben heard it and he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, shed no blood. But cast him into this pit, which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him, that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. Let me tell you, people of God, your situation looks bad, but God has an intercessor for you. Just like Joseph. Joseph had an intercessor for him. He didn't realize it because the enemy was conspiring to take Joseph out. But guess what? There were somebody that were interceding for him, his brother Reuben. He says, no, 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 no. Let's not kill him. Let's throw him into a pit. Now, that looks bad, right? But you got to understand, when you're interceding from somebody, sometimes God will put you in a position to pray for that individual that it seems like doom and gloom. But let me tell you, God has a plan and a purpose for this thing. So as he com- continues, he tells his brothers, let's not shed no blood. And here's the reason why. Because he knew, I'll come back later. I'll take Joseph out of the pit and I'll return him to his father. But guess what? Reuben didn't see what God was going to do in, in Joseph's life. What, what he didn't realize, it was all part of God's glorious plan for Joseph. Verse 23. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers that they stripped him, Joseph, of his tunic, the tunic of many colors that was on him. Then they took him and cast him into a pit. So not only, you remember his father, he gave him a, a, a coat of many colors. It was shown as favor. It was shown as grace. It was shown as above all his other brothers. And that's what made the brothers envious and jealous and mad at him. Let me tell you, God's given you a lot of dreams. And you got people who are mad at you. You got people at your job, they're mad at you. They can't stand you. Why? Because God's about to promote you to a higher level in your business, in, in, in your financial area. And, and they don't like it. The enemy definitely doesn't like it so he's conspired to try to take you out but God's not going to let him do that and we heard that they took the the tunic off of Joseph then after that the Bible says then they cast him into a pit let's move on down to uh, verse 27 now they're talking about selling their brother because now in verse 25 we have Ishmaelites coming from Galid they're bringing all types of spices, bombs, um, um, myrrh. Everything was going to Egypt. So they decided, hey, let's sell our brother. In verse 27, he says, come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh. So here we see that also now Reuben and all them, he's trying to talk them out. Hey, let's don't kill our brother. He's our flesh. He's, our, he's flesh of our bones, you know. Let's not take him out like this. How can, how can we do this against our own brother? A lot of you, you've been, you've been betrayed by your family members. You've been betrayed by your brothers. You've been betrayed by a lot of people in your family. And you think, you think wow, how can that person love me? The same thing applies to Joseph. As, as Joseph was only minding his own business. He was doing only what God called him to do. He, he couldn't help it that his father favored him above all his other brothers. He couldn't help that. That wasn't his fault. And even and the thing about it, even God showed showed him them dreams and after all those dreams uh, Joseph thought I go tell my brothers this and they're going to be happy for me surely they will rejoice with me let me tell you some people of God if you want to see the blessing
blessing and the favor of God on your life, it doesn't come through being jealous and envious of others. You and I, we must rejoice when people get blessed. When you have a, when you have a sickness in your body and you haven't been healed yet and you see some basket healed, don't be envious. Don't be jealous. Say, Lord, I'm next in line. Lord, you healed so many people in the Bible. I know you're going to heal me. This morning, don't don't be don't look at them and envy them don't be jealous but rejoice with them be excited say yes you got your healing you got your financial breakthrough you got your your family restored your marriage restored your education everything your mind's been restored and and then after that then you give god some praise lord i thank you you did this for this person i know you do the same thing for me so going back so going back now they sell Joseph. They sold him in, he sold the Ishmaelites and they sold him for 20 shekels. Sounds like somebody that we know, right? Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus Christ for 30. Now here it is. We see that Joseph, he was sold into slavery for 20 uh, shekels. So here we see that now Joseph is now given to the, uh, to, to the uh, Egyptian. Now we go to uh, Genesis chapter 39. And we read about Potiphar. He was a, a general. And the thing about it is when he, saw, when he saw Joseph, he saw something that everybody else didn't. So here we see, um, starting at verse 1, Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the uh, Mishmaelites, who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Verse 3, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had put under authority. So here we see that when Potiphar saw something in Joseph, he saw something that nobody else saw because he was watching Joseph. God was with Joseph. And everything that uh, Joseph had, it prospered. It succeeded. The same thing with you and I, people of God. God is putting you in people's lives. And they're seeing that, ah, because of this person, they're making my business grow. They're, they're, they're bringing healing into my family. They're bringing financial prosperity in, into my family because they recognize something that nobody else has. And just like Potiphar, he recognized that the hand of the Lord was upon him and made him successful. And the Bible says, then he made him over overseer he gave him more uh, uh, authority he gave him much more God wants to give a lot of you this morning authority God wants to give you more places he wants to give you more territory he wants to give you uh, 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 businesses ideas that you can use for the kingdom of heaven but guess what the enemy don't like that so after that in verse 7 the enemy always creeping around your blessing don't get it wrong. When the blessing of God comes on your life, when it's trying to get you, the enemy wants to steal that. Remember, he's a thief. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And verse 7, And it came to pass after these things that, that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. And Potiphar's wife did this for many times. Many, 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 many times. She was trying to get Joseph to compromise. How about you and I? Have we compromised with the world have we compromised our relationship with Jesus Christ? Ah, it's, it's something we need to stand for God in the time in which we're living today. And she does this repeatedly. She's always, Joseph, come lie with me. Joseph, come lie with me. And she's probably looking all good, smelling all good. And, and, and she even got to a point and says, you know, Potiphar's gone. He won't come back for some time. So come and, and lie with me. Nobody will know about it. But Joseph, Joseph knew, how can I sin against God? How can I sin against this God of Ezekiel? After all the blessings and the favor that he's put upon my life. And not only that, but he saved my soul. I could have been like the rest of the world. I could be out there drinking, smoking, having premarital sex, uh, being a homosexual, being a, a lesbian. But Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, chose me out of this world to represent his kingdom so as we move on we see that joseph many times she kept asking come lie with me come lie with me and the bible says he wouldn't do it he, 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 he wouldn't do it so we go to verse 20 of of genesis chapter 39 then joseph's master took him and put him into prison why because now when when she asked joseph to lie with her the bible says 
that she grabbed his garment. And because of that, the Bible says he fled. He fled out of her hand. She was sitting there holding the garment. That's all she was holding. And think what happened to her. She was only holding his garment. And because of the embarrassment, and because of that embarrassment, she lies on Joseph. Joseph get put in prison. You know, God uses him to interpret people's dreams. So guess what happens? God finally brings him to his destination. After he gets out of prison, then, uh, he, his, he, uh, uh, you know, God gives Pharaoh uh, two disturbing dreams. Pharaoh looks for somebody. He says, I, I need to find somebody who can interpret this dream. As he continued, they said, there's a man we know here. His name is Joseph. Uh, as Joseph was coming to Pharaoh, he got himself all spruced up, ready to go. And, jo- and, 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 uh, and, and King Pharaoh asked him, you know, what should we do about this? And then Joseph began to tell him, this is what we need to do. This is the wisdom. So also, here we go. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to wrap up uh, really quickly here. But it says in verse 37 of chapter 41, it says, And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set, over, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. So here we see that Pharaoh, again, saw something in Joseph. But what Joseph didn't realize, God had now brought him to his final destination. God had brought him to that place. So here we see that whatever you're going through, God is going to bring you out of your situation. He's going to bring you through your, through, through, through your, um, through your area. We'll look at another individual really quickly. His name is Job. Job chapter 1, verse 13 through 19. Job didn't realize, but the enemy... The enemy already, the, the enemy had already challenged God. He says, if you do this against Job, he'll curse you. So the Bible says, and the enemy went out, and, and, and the Bible says that Joseph, that Job, excuse me, that Joseph, he lost his sheep, his oxen, his camels, his servants, and all his sons and daughters, including his health. So here we see that no, look at, look at what Job went through. Everything that people has, he lost everything. Surely he would curse God and die. That's when his wife says, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? Why should you continue to serve this God? What about you this morning? The, the hardships that you're going through, are you going to just curse God and die? But the Bible says also, as we continue in Job 42, verse 10 and 12, and the Bible says, and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So here we see that even though you're going through a hard time in life and things are being taken away from you, God is going to restore to you double fold. I'm wrapping up. I'm going to show you about another individual who, was, who, who had his midnight hour. His name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the one who died for you. He shed his blood for your sins. He rose from the dead on the third day. He loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to change your life. Here's some words of comfort in Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. It says, come to me, all you that weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. First Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Psalms 105, 4 says, look to the Lord and his strength. Isaiah 43, 1 says, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. Psalms 10, 13 says, for everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. This morning, we're going to pray a simple prayer this morning, and I want you to call on the name of the Lord. John 10, 10 says, Jesus came to give us an abundant life. John 14, 6 says, Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. John 1, 12 says, but unto all who believed in him, accepted him, he gave the right to become the children of God. And John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This morning, I'm talking to a lot of people this morning. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. And Jesus is going to change your life. It's going to, your life will never be the same. I've, I've told you what you must do. Believe in your heart. I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I come before you this morning. Lord, I'm a sinner, and I need to be saved. Jesus, 
I ask you right now to come live in my heart. Forgive me for all my sins. I believe that you died on that cross for me. You shed your blood for all my sins, and you rose from the dead on the third day. Now I open my heart to you, Jesus, and I ask you to save me. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I repent of all my sins, and today I choose to serve you for the rest of the days of my life. If you prayed that prayer this morning, God would you bless you. You're now part of the family of God. And I want to pray for those very quickly who need a healing in their body. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for all those who have afflicted in their bodies. God, I speak healing to their bodies and their minds. We come against fear in their life. We speak the peace of God. We speak uh, uh, health and prosperity in their life. God, th- those who have been tormented, they're being set free today, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. And we give you the glory. And also, I want to encourage you. This is the month of prayer, uh, uh, June prayer. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to pray and seek the face of God. That's why this church is also of love and of prayer. So I want to encourage you. Uh, this is the prayer convention in June. So be, be caught praying. Don't be caught sleeping. And also, if you need further prayer, there's a number on the screen. Reach out and, pr- and somebody will pray with you no matter what it is. I want to thank everybody for coming out this morning. God, richly bless you all. And, and y'all have a blessed and glorious day. In Jesus' name, amen.